Hi friends! Stick around to the end of the video to see the new tribute to the Princess of Wales. I'm sure you've seen this beautiful photo of late Queen Elizabeth II and her grandchildren and great-grandchildren for her 97th birthday. And it's been around for a while now. It's a beautiful photo of her sitting on the couch with the children on the couch and around her. Now, for some reason, Getty has decided to go through all of the images that have been given to them by the palace and decided to also deem this one has been manipulated. Now, what I don't seem to understand is why Getty doesn't seem to understand. There's a difference between manipulation and editing, or at least to most people there is. Editing is something you do with, like I said, Adobe Photoshop, where manipulation is taking a photo and putting layers and layers and layers over it to fix something differently that is deceptive. Now, the fact that they may have straightened the collar or fixed a hair flick or something to that effect on these photos, that's called editing. That's not called manipulation. But now, because of the whole hubbub over the Princess of Wales photo at Mother's Day, apparently they're on a mission. But for some reason, it's only a one-sided mission. This photo, if you don't know, was taken by Princess of Wales. And it was a beautiful photo that was seen around the world. And I don't see any problem with it. I also don't see any problem with these apparent digital enhancements that they're saying happen. And you can see if you look very tightly on this photo where there might be a little bit of editing. But until now, no one seemed to have a problem with a photographer doing editing. We all know there's been many photos that no one has ever questioned about some other members of the family that just went on around the world and including Getty and others didn't ever question. I don't understand what is going on. I know many people feel that because the Princess of Wales did not give her private information and they didn't get that juicy detail that they wanted to have on their, their byline that she wanted privacy that they were angry and that they were going to somehow get her information so that they could be the first to tell the world. It's very tabloid journalism. And it's really sad because when you think of someone like Princess Catherine, especially, she has given so much to the world. She has signed off on any true private life when you think about it. She is married to a future king who is also the son of the king. She has three children. One of them will be a future king. And their lives are led for the public, it feels like, in many ways. We know a lot about them that many people don't know about many members of their own family. But that's never enough when it comes to the media. The media has to constantly hound. Now, I know I love to hear stories about something that the whales do or even the uh, Duke and Duchess of Edinburgh or even Princess Anne and her husband. It's love of knowledge of the royal family. But I don't need to know every detail. I don't need to know every medical detail. I feel when it comes to their privacy, they will allow you to know what they feel comfortable knowing. So the media has gone on this bend to get everything that Princess Catherine wants to hold private. And I think that has been the driven force behind getting these photos of her being in a car and then photos and video of her walking through a market. This has been the driving force because you have to be the first who gets it. And if you're the first who does, then you get all the eyes and you control the information and you get all the money. Now, I don't know, but many people have been pointing to one certain way of thinking 
when it comes to why all of a sudden this is happening. Because when you think about it, many times the media has been very aware of the royal family's privacy and allowed them to have it. When you think of their vacations and things like that, whenever the children are on school break and the two go on vacation with their children, they don't really have the paparazzi hounding them every day. They usually give them a photo op in the beginning, and that seems to be enough for them. And then they allow them to have their vacation and move on. But all of a sudden, now because of this whole mess with her privacy and her health, there is no boundaries. It's like the boundaries of ethics are falling away with the media and now they've decided to just go all out and they don't care henceforth following to the market and finding people to purchase their video they didn't even video it they purchased the video and the photos from someone else so it's not a good thing to follow through with and you wonder how far they're going to go with this but i think in the end the media is going to hurt themselves because most of the photos are given by the royal family, such as this photo with Queen Elizabeth and the grandchildren. This was taken by Princess Catherine and given to the media outlets. If they keep pushing them and keep prodding them and trying to say that we're manipulating if we're editing, they may not be getting so many photos that they used to have in the past. A security breach has reportedly taken place at the private London Hospital where the Princess of Wales underwent abdominal surgery in January. An investigation has been launched at the London Clinic after it was claimed that at least one member of the staff had tried to access Catherine's private medical records. A hospital insider has told the Mirror that it is a major security breach and incredibly damaging for the hospital, given its unblemished reputation for treating members of the royal family. Senior hospital bosses contacted Kensington Palace immediately after the incident was brought to their attention and assured the palace that there would be a full investigation. The whole medical staff have been left utterly shocked and distraught over the allegations and very hurt that a trusted colleague would have allegedly been responsible for such a breach of trust and ethics. In response, a Kensington Palace spokesperson said, This is a matter for the London Clinic. Catherine spent 13 days in the private hospital following her surgery on January 16th. Details of the prince's condition has not been revealed, but Kensington Palace previously said it was not cancer-related and that Catherine wished her personal medical information to remain private. King Charles was also treated for an enlarged prostate at the same hospital as his daughter-in-law, with the pair both being discharged on January 29th. The London Clinic was officially opened by the then Duke and Duchess of York in 1932. It was the brainchild of a group of Harley Street doctors who set up a new nursing home using the highest medical standards of the day. Past high-profile patients include the Duke of Edinburgh, the late Queen's younger sister, Princess Margaret, former U.S. President John F. Kennedy, and actress Elizabeth Taylor. Security at the London Clinic has to be very top-notch when it comes to their clients because they do service such high-profile clients as the royal family and celebrities from around the world. Now, having someone try to get access to the information for Catherine is not the same as succeeding. This means basically someone who didn't have the security clearance tried to get into some computer access that they were not allowed and they were shut out and found out. This is not surprising because with the nature of what has been going on for the last two and a half months, people are going to be a little more willing to try and get information and sell it to the public. I'm glad to hear that they stopped this person, and I'm also glad that now they know to even put more fail-safes in place so it will not happen. Duchess Sophie looked elegant as she stood alongside her sister-in-law, Princess Anne, for an engagement at Buckingham Palace. The Duchess of Edinburgh looked wonderfully in an unexpected deep teal satin dress 
that was covered in white and wore brown flowers. The garment had a collarless neckline and long sleeves, as well as a cinch waistline and a pleated mid-length skirt. Sophie teamed the elegant dress with a pair of drop earrings in an amber hue and stacked dainty gold bracelets. Her hair was tied into a soft updo that framed her face elegantly, and the Duchess seemed to take a leaf out of Queen Letisa of Spain's book when it came to breathing new life into a royal makeup look. The royal skin looked bronzed and glowy, but she swapped out the minimal eye look for a Letisa as smoky pink toned eyeshadow look with plenty of mascara. Princess Anne matched Sophie's sophisticated energy. The Princess Royal wore a heavy wool blue dress, which nipped in at the waist and had a mandarin collar. The Royal popped on a silk pattern neck scarf and a dimple string of pearls to dress up the garment and wore her hair in her signature voluptuous updo. Her makeup was barely detectable with just a wash of pink lipstick and satin finish. The royal ladies were seen together at Buckingham Palace at a reception for Korean War veterans to mark the 70th anniversary of the Korean War, which they hosted on behalf of King Charles, who is undergoing treatment following his cancer diagnosis. Princess Anne and Duchess Sophie were seen greeting Major General Eldon Miller, as well as South Korea's ambassador to the United Kingdom, Yoon Yikole, and the director of Remembrance, Philippa Rawlinson. On behalf of the king, Anne and Sophie welcomed representatives from the Korean embassy, the Minister of Defense, and the Royal British Legion before mingling with 200 war veterans in the palace bow room. It's a real privilege to be here at Buckingham Palace today with so many Korean veterans. The Royal British Legion was privileged last year to mark 70 years since the signing of the Korean Armistice, working alongside the embassy to bring veterans together to mark that significant anniversary of the Horse Guards Parade. And to see people come back together today at Buckingham Palace, meet their Royal Highnesses and continue to share stories, I know means so much to them and I'm proud to have had a small part in making their untold stories heard again. The Prince of Wales visited the city in South Yorkshire to continue his work around his Hogwarts initiative. Prince William traveled to Sheffield on Tuesday to continue to highlight the work of his Hogwarts project he launched last June. The father of three hailed his wife Catherine's work with young children as he joined a conference in the Millennium Gallery to help end homelessness. When the topic of childhood was raised by Kate Joseph, chief executive of Sheffield City Council, William immediately remarked about the success of the Princess Shaping Us campaign through her early years' projects. At the Hogwarts Sheffield local coalition meeting, one man, Chris Liam, told the prince how he left the Royal Navy with post-traumatic stress disorder, and this led him down a path of drug and alcohol addiction and eventually prison. William told him, Chris, can I just say how brave you are to be here and talk about your story? The prince asked his aides to get Charles' contact details so they could stay in touch. Speaking after the visit, Chris, who works with the Sheffield-based Cathedral Archer Project for Homelessness, said, Wow, not what I expected. He was a really nice man, and he really listens, which took me back a little. I liked him. Earlier in the day, William also joined a housing workshop to discuss solutions to support local families at risk of homelessness. He asked Jean Ali, Sheffield City Council Executive Director, does something like Homewards allow you the space, if you like, to help in this area? Because bearing in mind with the council, you run so many things in so many days when you do have to get a chance to lift your head up and actually get ahead of a lot of problems that councils all up and down the country are always busy dealing with. I'm hoping that Homewards comes along and can lift the pressure off you bring more people into the mix, and allow you to be able to plan and see something further down the line. Homewards is a five-year project launched by Prince William to bring together a range of individuals and organizations to develop bespoke homelessness solutions in Newport, South Wales, three neighboring Dorset towns, Poole, Bournemouth, Christchurch, and the South London borough of Lambeth, Belfast, Aberdeen, and Sheffield. The initiative was given a boost worth £100 million from the DIY retailer's home base 
who was Chief Executive Officer Damian McLaughlin, said he personally wanted to be involved in the project. 